Hello and welcome to this quick video about RG Pilot. I had a fantastic question from a Patreon of mine called Sebastian. So Sebastian, this one is for you. But it was such a fantastic question, I thought, you know what? I don't think this has really been talked about in a video that I've ever seen, so let me make one. I need to say a massive thank you to a gentleman called Matt. Matt is one of the RG Pilot developers who has kind of explained in a lot more detail how this actually works. So a big thank you to Matt for putting up with all of my questions around things like this. Now, what this is referring to is the fact that when you flash a flight controller, be it something like this Pixhawk Cube or another Pixhawk style flight controller like the Holibo 6C, 6C Mini or whatever, or even something like a Matek Wing flight controller or a Speedy Wing or an Omnibus, whatever it is, when you flash RD Pilot onto it and then you upgrade it, you'll notice that the, all the settings are persistent. When you've upgraded it, you'll find that your radio still works, that your accelerometer calibration is still there, your modes are still set up, the port settings are all configured. It's all persistent and very, very clever. And Sebastian's question was about, well, RD Pilot does that. Why doesn't people like Beta Flight and iNav do it as well? Well, this is actually worthwhile going through this in a little bit of detail because the RD Pilot developers have been very smart about making sure that when you perform an upgrade, RG Pilot's actually doing a lot of stuff in the background that you as a user don't really see to preserve your configuration, but also update it so that it's applicable and configured correctly for the version of RG Pilot that you just upgraded to. So the cool thing about the way that Ardu Pilot stores all the parameters is that it stores it in EEPROM. And EEPROM is that kind of storage here on the flight controller that survives being rebooted in the same way as the firmware. And Ardu Pilot is quite clever in that it can tell if a parameter has been changed from the default value. Even if you change it from the default value to something else and change it back, Ardu Pilot will still know that you have edited that parameter because there's a little flag that's set when it's edited. So what this actually means is that although the parameters are persistent and stored in EEPROM and not overwritten, when Ardu Pilot is flashed to the flight controller. The really cool part is, is that Ardu Pilot will check each of those parameters in turn and apply some kind of conversion if they have been changed or refactored with the new versions. So say for example, you're running something like Ardu Plane and you upgrade it to the latest version of Ardu Plane. As part of the upgrade, Ardu Pilot will check each of the parameters and then change them and apply the conversions where they are needed. And that might include things like the definition, uh, the unit changing or moving of parameters from one memory slot to another, something that the user would be hard pushed to notice, but it's all done automatically as part of the update. And they use that flag on the changed parameters to see which ones the user has altered to make informed decisions of how to apply those conversions in the best way for the update. However, this does present a little bit of a problem because although those conversions are done for the upgrade, they're not really done, although the RG Pilot developers have tried their best to try and make it so when you downgrade, you don't get into too much trouble. However, all of the same level of rigor that's done on an upgrade, to be honest, isn't there when you do a downgrade. So you do have to be super careful when you downgrade so you can get into trouble quite quickly. So when upgrading your firmware or downgrading, it's best practice to save the parameter file before changing to the new firmware. And then you always have that reference that you can go back to and refer to if something isn't quite right. There is the compare params button in Mission Planner to see what's changed. And that's a really great way once you've done something to go back and just see what has been refactored or changed about in the new version. This is also another good reason why you shouldn't reset your parameters back to how they were in a prior version of Ardu Pilot in case one of the things you're changing back to their default values has already been refactored or had a conversion. And if you're looking to do this, then there's no shortcut. You just have to plow your way through the release notes and figure it out. Now, I have done videos in the past about how you can completely take it back and get back to the default settings. There is a button in the full parameter tree to apply the defaults back. However, when I get into trouble with this and I've been messing around and I'm really getting lost, the way that I tend to do it is to flash 
another version of Ardu Pilot onto the flight controller. So say this was configured with something like Ardu Plane, I will flash it with Ardu Quad and then back to Ardu Plane because when you change from one version of Ardu Pilot to another, it will overwrite and reset all of the configuration files and that is done for safety. And sometimes I do that. It's my default way of doing it, actually. If I'm getting in a bit of a mess as I've been playing around trying to reproduce a problem or have just been goofing around with something new and managed to lose my way. Now, this works in this way, regardless of the architecture of the flight controller, whether it's something like this Q-Pilot system, whether it's a regular Pixhawk style board or something like one of the Matek or SpeedyB wings or one of the other dozens and dozens of boards now supported by Ardu Pilot. And we have the Ardu Pilot developers and people like Tridge, Matt and others who create this fantastic code to thank for this idea of having persistent parameters. It's something that currently doesn't exist in other firmware that I use here. And in a way, that's not necessarily a bad thing, but I would love it if things like iNav and Betaflight did these same kind of automated conversions for PID settings and other bits and pieces as part of an upgrade. So hopefully that helps explain it. The way it works is that there is a separate space in EEPROM that isn't overwritten as part of the flash update. However, Ardu Pilot is very clever and will actually read the parameter file, apply conversions and other bits and pieces to the parameter file to get it up to date with the version that you're flashing and then copy all of that stuff back as part of the upgrade process. And my last point on this is this is why I wouldn't personally use the load params function in Mission Planner. It can really, really mess up your parameter file if you're loading from an older version where those conversions and those adaptations that were done the parameters haven't been applied. You can upload old parameters into a new version of Ardu Pilot that's going to get you into big trouble. And that's one of the reasons why we had those issues with trying to generate a VTOL param file for Ardu Plane because unfortunately, as soon as things were tweaked in Ardu Pilot, those were no longer able to be used. Thank you for watching my video. Check out the playlist and adding Payment 360 to your search terms will help you find my content. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. You can support the time I spend here answering questions and helping others by using the links in the video description.